What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of the 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below, the best gaming related show here on planet Earth. And with that being said everyone, we have a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode of the show. So let's get into it. So as we've continued to grow, I've got an awesome, awesome announcement, guys, that I am incredibly excited. I've been wanting to share for a while, and that is, is that my three shows, the Gears Cast, Eight Below Show, and Horror Theory, we are hiring and looking for co-hosts to join us on the shows. We're looking for people who are very passionate about horror games, gaming in general, Gears of War, and everything in those universes, that being like esports, entertainment, gaming. I'm really excited, guys, to be expanding upon what we've started here, and I want to just continue building upon what we've what we've started. And it's all because of you guys that we've gotten to this point where now we are hiring uh, co-hosts, we're hiring people to come onto the show, work behind the scenes, and create the highest quality and quantity of content that we possibly can here on the YouTube channel and here at Zero TV. I have you know committed myself to pouring out as much content as possible and the highest quality of content as well, whether we're talking about the future of gaming, the future of esports, entertainment, games that got canceled, games that we want to see continuations of, and echoing new games and games that we want continuations of into existence. And so I'm just so excited and I'm very um, thankful to all of you that you know have subscribed to the YouTube channel, have liked the videos, who have been checking us out on Patreon, have been checking out the merch, been purchasing the merch. Um, it has been unbelievable, guys, what we've been able to do up to this point in time for a YouTube channel of this size. We're building a community, and I want to continue expanding upon that because it's one thing to hear my voice and hear my opinions and things of that nature, but I think it's important that we hear other creators' opinions, other people out there that have an opinion about whether it's a future of a specific game or the future of the next, you know, Dead Space title or the, the next Bully title or Grand Theft Auto, Max Payne, all these different titles that we talk about on a regular basis here on the YouTube channel. I want to talk with more and more of you guys out there and I want to put an opportunity out there to the community to bring about co-hosts onto the show, bring about more and more people behind the scenes that can help help out on the YouTube channel, to the Patreon, to the official merch, to all the different things that we have going on here at Zero TV. I want to bring that to more and more people, and I'm so excited uh, to be bringing this out to all of you. So you guys can check out in the description down below ways in which you guys can get involved, the ways that we're going to be doing in terms of a recruitment process. You guys can, of course, uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, of course, the YouTube channel. We're going to have more and more ways of being able to find new people and let us know who you would like to see on the shows as co-hosts, regular co-hosts, people who are here on a relatively consistent basis. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts about that in the comment section down below. Let's have a conversation about it, guys. Thank you so much for all the support you guys have been giving me up to this point in time. I do not take any one of you for granted. Thanks again. Let's get into the show. So a sequel to a beloved game that so many people would love to see a continuation of is Bully in the form of a Bully 2. And there's a lot of talk, leaks, speculation that Bully 2 is going to be the next project that Rockstar works on after GTA 6. Now, I personally have been vocal that I would love to see a Max Payne 4 come out, but a Bully 2 would be something really, really special as well. So I want to talk about everything that we know at this point about Bully 2, where this game is at this point in time, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article that is coming to us from Jordan Oleman of Games Radar, Bully 2 has been requested by fans, but here's everything we'd like to see if Rockstar took us back to school. Bully 2 rumors have been circulating for a long time now. Since the first game's release almost 16 years ago for the PS2, the rumors haven't really stopped. But we've yet to actually get anything in the way of official confirmation that it exists or if we'll someday see it surface. Over the years, Rockstar has had other priorities 
what with GTA 5, GTA Online, and Red Dead Redemption 2, and now we also know that the development of GTA 6 is underway. Still, that doesn't stop fans everywhere dreaming of someday seeing a bully sequel. In recent years, we've seen a number of rumors and supposed leaks, but we still haven't had anything concrete from Rockstar. So in terms of the rumors, guys, well, the first allusion to Bully 2 was in 2009 when bully composer Sean Lee told the Gaming Liberty that he was set to work on it in an interview. The page is now archived, but you can check it out thanks to the Wayback Machine. Yes, it looks like I will be doing the soundtrack for Bully 2 in the not-so-distant future was the quote, which as you can expect, set the Bully fandom ablaze. The fire was then stoked by interviews with Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser, who told Gamus Ultra that the property is one that Rockstar adores and might come back in the future following the development of Max Payne 3, which launched back in 2012. After a long period of silence, there was a concept art leak in mid-2017, easily the most substantial and believable bit of Bully 2 yet. Rockstar didn't comment on the widely reported leak, which was posted onto Imgur and Twitter by Bully 2 Info. It shows a number of characters that look ripped straight out of Bully's universe, including your typical dork, a veteran survivalist based on Jack Torrance from The Shining, Goss Clowns, Moonshine Drinking Moms, and dodgy looking tennis players. The concept art also showcased a pocket of rural American suburbia with leaks suggesting a change in location for the sequel. A collection of as of yet unsubstantiated rumors can be found on the Bully 2 Reddit, where it is claimed the sequel was going to have Jimmy living with his stepfather after the events of the first game, visiting a summer camp and dealing with step-siblings. It is not clear whether the project was canceled or if it's still in development now. And so what I will say about that, guys, is I believe that Bully 2 is definitely something Rockstar is working on. Now, obviously, I believe all hands are on deck with GTA 6 because that's going to be a much bigger title than Bully 2 will be. But a Bully 2 could be something that's coming very shortly after GTA 6. Rockstar probably, once GTA 6 releases, they're going to have a team that's servicing that game for the long term. But Bully 2 could be something that they're working on since they already have concept art, it seems like, amongst a number of things, whether it's story, setting, all of those things. I love the idea that they this is going to be a change of setting as well if the leaks are supposedly true. And uh, I would love to see this happen. And could Rockstar, you know, divvy up their teams between Bully 2, Max Payne 4, maybe even an LA Noir 2? It's very possible because Rockstar, I mean... GTA is their biggest franchise and IP that they hold. So they've got, understandably, all hands on deck with that title. But after the release of it, I definitely could see them working on multiple projects following GTA 6. Now, in terms of leaks, guys, well, alas, these rumors did not come to fruition in 2020 as suggested, but they are worth mentioning with regards to how much the community cares for the idea of Bully 2. In Red Dead Redemption 2, released in 2018, for example, one of the game's more involved side quests rewards the players with the Callaway Revolver, which has Canis Canum Edit engraved on the side. The GTA Online Casino arrived in the same summer, adding a painting into the game, also titled Canis Canum Edit. The painting depicts the animals on the Bullworth Academy crest, and it was created by a fictional artist named Matthew Morse, suggesting a Morse code signal hidden in the painting. From there, Internet Insiders claimed that Bully 2 was coming in 2020 with virtually nothing to go on besides these hardly subtle nods and winks to the first game from its developer, Rockstar. Now, it was reported, guys, that at the Game Awards 2021 that it was reportedly canceled. Well, according to leaker Tom Henderson, a sequel to Bully, Rockstar's slightly more PG-13 take on the GTA formula was expected as a potential surprise reveal at the Game Awards 2021. Henderson claimed that sources had been shown some material alluding to a reveal soon, including a game in a playable state, but that information is a bit blurry at the moment. Now, in terms of like the setting, well, the map in Bully was really ambitious for the time with multiple interconnected estates and sections of town which Jimmy was able to explore from the carnival to the academy and even an asylum. Yet ever since Rockstar's maps have ballooned in size and achieved worlds of remarkable scope, always upping the ante with vast biomes and entire cities simulated in real time. If we believe the leaks that point to a rural American setting, that would be a nice disconnect from the claustrophobia of Bullworth, which dominated the original 
original game. Perhaps if time has moved on, there will be a full bustling college campus to orbit around, albeit with surrounding suburbia, student housing, shops, and nightlife to explore. So there was talk about some changes with some of the mechanics, guys. The first game was littered with mechanics to help Jimmy cause chaos at Bullworth, from slingshots to stink bombs and bags of marbles to trip jocks up. Yet if the game does jump forward to university, there's scope to implement almost persona-esque side rackets and jobs, as well as new throwable objects, weapons, and mediums of engagement to make a name for yourself on campus. We've seen in GTA Online and Chinatown Wars that Rockstar know how to give players side jobs like running their own companies, nightclubs, and motorcycle gangs. No doubt there will be some of allusion to drug use and sale of Bully 2 sees the light of day, especially if it decides to make the jump to college. In any case, a new suit of mischief mechanics from 4K 68 FPS swirls to paper airplanes and everything in between would really add some depth to the game. Naturally, there were no guns in Bully, so Rockstar had to get experimental with the limitations and it worked really well with ridiculous weapons like bags of dog poop, potato cannons, and dodgeballs making the cut. The mind races as to what could come up with for the sequel. And I agree, I think this would be awesome to see us go to university and that would be a really cool concept maybe expanding upon where we can explore and like the weapons we can use and the different things that you can do, the different mischief that you can get into, different mechanics would be awesome. It would be really cool. Now, there was a lot of talk that Rockstar couldn't come up with a very compelling story for Bully 2, but I really think that they there's so much that they could do here with the Bully universe. I would love to see a continuation, and at the very least, I would love to see them make a Bully trilogy. I think that would be awesome. Whether it be, you know, university would be the next step, and then the following step would be life after university. I think that could be really cool. I just think that there's so much that they could do with Jimmy's story moving forward but we'll have to wait and see as more information comes out I'll definitely let you guys know let me know what you guys want to see out of Bully 2 and where you think this title is at this point do you think it's in a limbo state or a state of no return do you think that we will ever get a Bully 2 let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and for more Bully 2 content and videos keep it here with Zero TV you guys know on the YouTube channel, we will talk about gaming personalities and, you know, the whereabouts of some of these gaming icons and people and, you know, their whereabouts and where are they at this point in time. And what we're going to talk about today is where is Celestia Vega? This was a gaming personality, Twitch streamer. Um, she had amassed a massive following. We're going to talk about Celestia Vega and where her whereabouts are at this point in time. I would love to hear guys' thoughts about this in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article coming to us from Benji P of Biography Pedia, to start on Celestia Vega, we have to go back in time as to who is she as a person. Well, born on August 12, 1998 in New York City under the fire name of Leo, Celestia Vega is a 21-year-old American social media personality, gamer, YouTuber, and of course, an adult actress. She rose to fame in 2015 when she started streaming games like The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion, and RuneScape. At one point, she started dressing provocatively and posting adult content, which garnered the attention of male fans in particular. She was also massively popular on social media, but ended up deleting all of her accounts when she became an adult actress, which resulted in her alienating herself from many of her former gaming friends and associates. She was gone from social media for a while, but ultimately resurfaced in March of 2019. Although she's notified people that she's okay, Celestia is still keeping a low profile and is only active on Twitch from time to time. So what what happened here in terms of Celestia Vega? Like what happened to her in terms of why is she kind of gone totally rogue off the off the map? Well, in December of 2018, Vega shocked her fandom when she wrote, I'm done on all her social media profiles and subsequently deleted them. Everyone knew about her problems with anxiety and depression, so people were afraid that she might have actually committed suicide. Nobody knew where she was until March 17, 2019, when she posted a YouTube video with the title, I'm back, using 
using this opportunity to share everything that had happened to her because of her painful experiences from past relationships, she thought that exploring her freedom would help her feel better. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case. The atmosphere that I've been in the past two years in adult work had really left me broken, she said of her experience. Nowadays, you can see her streaming on Twitch from time to time. She expressed no desire to return to social media for the time being, which is really, really interesting to me. Obviously, she talks about her time in the adult industry and how it left her broken. You know, Celestia Vega seems like someone who's been, you know, over the years just trying to find herself as such a young person still trying to figure life out and trying to figure out what it is that she wants to do with her life. It sounds like she had some very bad, you know, previous relationships. And then, of course, the adult industry was very, very much so taxing on her from a mental perspective. So for her to now just be a Twitch streamer, it makes a lot of sense, but it'll be interesting to see if she ever comes back to, you know, social media in a major, major way. But let me know, what do you guys think Celestia Vega is doing right now outside of obviously being a streamer and all of those things? Do you think she's going to make a return to all these other social media platforms? And what do you think her next move is going to be? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And for more gaming, esports, news, and content, keep it here with Zero TV. A game that many of us want to see a continuation of is the Fallout franchise. Fallout, guys, what a massive franchise to say the least. And obviously with the, the more recent things that we've gotten out of Fallout are, you know, in the form of like Fallout 76, something that is definitely forgettable. But that being said, not everybody hated Fallout 76 and a lot of people are wanting to see the continuation of Fallout moving forward and myself included wanting to see the future, that being Fallout 5. So I want to talk about everything that we know up to this point in time about Fallout 5. Where is this game and when could we possibly see it in the future? Let's talk about it. So guys, in an article coming to us from Kat Bussell of Tech Radar, Fallout 5 is likely a very long way off. While Fallout 5 has yet to be officially revealed, it seems highly unlikely that Bethesda has forgotten one of its mo most popular series. With Starfield only having just been released recently, however, it makes sense that Bethesda would be keeping its Fallout plans on the back burner, at least for now. Ranking amongst the best RPGs of recent memory, Fallout 3 and Fallout Four offered memorable and deeply affecting stories. Reinforced by generous environmental storytelling, these games have been some of the most immersive sci-fi offerings to ever grace a hard disk. So if you've ever played a Fallout game, you'll know the series reveals in its nuclear ravage American setting, Fallout games have all been set in a U.S. state, so it would stand to reason to aspect wooden uh, change. So Fallout 3, for example, was set in Washington while Fallout 4 took place in Boston. It would be nice to see Fallout explore different parts of the world, but that might change the game up too much and alienate long-term fans who are particularly fond of the setting. For those looking for a different experience, however, modders have been working uh, hard at work crafting their own takes on other locations in the Fallout universe. You don't have to look far to see fans discussing and fantasizing about where Fallout 5 will take place. And I would love to see a little bit of a change in terms of Fallout 5. You know, with Fallout 76 and that sour taste it left, at least in my mouth, I would love them to kind of change it up a little bit with Fallout 5. I think that could be something really special for sure. Now, in terms of some of the news, guys, with Fallout 5, well, Fallout 5 is coming after The Elder Scrolls 6. So this is why we know that this is going to be a very, very long way off. In an interview with IGN, Todd Howard confirmed that Fallout 5 will be Bethesda's next project after The Elder Scrolls 6. Well, yes, Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production and you know we're going to be doing Fallout 5 after that so our slate's pretty full going forward for a while Howard told the publication we have some other projects that we look at from time to time as well work has begun sort of so work has started on Fallout 5 but don't hold your breath for seeing it anytime soon. Speaking to IGN in November 2021 regarding the impending release of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition, Bethesda Studio Director Todd Howard revealed that a one-pager design document was already in place for Fallout 5, being a very early blueprint for what the studio has planned for the game. Being a one-pager, the design document is a high-level outline, and there is therefore little to share with Starfield and the Elder Scrolls VI both up first. It'll be a while before we hear more about Fallout 5. So when are we probably going to get Fallout five guys well it's probably going to be a very long ways out because the Elder Scrolls 6 we all believe that this is still years upon years away Starfield's going to be serviced for the next you know couple of years and then the Elder Scrolls 6 would be the one that the next title that you know all hands on deck would be for Bethesda on that title 
And then after the Elder Scrolls 6, then you got Fallout 5. So we're looking at, you know, potentially seven to 10 years away easily before a Fallout 5 will ever make it to the shelves. As for whether uh, or not Obsidian, the studio which handled development duties on the Xbox 360 era Fallout New Vegas could have some involvement. Howard said, we've worked with other people from time to time. I can't say what's going to happen. If I could wave my hand and have Fallout 5 out, you know, I'd like to find a way to accelerate what we do, but I can't really say today or commit to anything other than the fact that our cadence is Starfield than Elder Scrolls 6. So could you know, Fallout 5 end up being worked on by Obsidian. I think it's absolutely a possibility and I would love it to be a possibility because I think that, you know, Bethesda, they got their hands full, of course, with, you know, obviously the Elder Scrolls 6 and of course Starfield, which just released. So to me, it would make sense for them to outsource some of this so that they can, you know, work on the Elder Scrolls 6 and not even have Fallout 5 even in their the back of their mind, at least for the time being, have somebody else work on it. Similar to like Max Payne, I would love to see Max Payne 4 worked on by Remedy so that Rockstar can focus on GTA 6 and then after that they can maybe focus on a Bully 2 or something else. Remedy does such a good job with creating these universes and they know about Max Payne so it makes sense they're doing a Max Payne 1 and 2 remake. Could they make Max Payne 4 as the next one for Rockstar? I think it's absolutely something that should happen because then Rockstar doesn't have to put all their resource and development into making a Max Payne 4. They can focus on GTA 6 another Red Dead Redemption, a Bully 2, maybe even an L.A. Noir 2. So on the flip side, when we talk about Bethesda, I think Obsidian or allowing Obsidian to work on Fallout 5, it makes complete sense to me. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think Fallout 5 is going to be coming in the next decade or when do you think this is going to happen and do you think Obsidian should be the ones really helping and helming the ship for a Fallout 5? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And for more Fallout 5, content and videos stay here with Zero TV. Do you guys remember Lawbreakers? This was a title, guys, that came out from Cliffy B and his studio that he created. And I want to talk about, you know, Lawbreakers and could this ever make a return? Could we ever get a sequel to this title? Because I feel like it was a game that had a lot of really cool elements to it and I would have loved to see a continuation of it in the future. So let's talk about what happened here to Lawbreakers and could we ever see a continuation in the future? Let's get into it. So guys, in an article that's coming to us from Oisin Kunick of VG247.com, Cliff Blazinski, director of the hero shooter Lawbreakers, was shut down in 2018, seemingly wants to bring the game back. I'm not going to judge you if you don't remember Lawbreakers as not many people even played the game, but now five years after the game shut down, Blazinski is trying to bring it back. Publisher Nexon, who's been in the news recently for lawsuit related reasons, owns the rights to Lawbreakers, having originally published the game and not having sold off the IP at any point. As a result, Blazinski just flat out tweeted at Nexon CEO asking about a revival. What well, turns out Nexon does own the rights to Lawbreakers, wrote Blazinski before tagging Nexon CEO. CEO Owen Mahoney and saying, how about sliding into my DMs so we can talk about the resurrection? Mahoney hasn't responded to the tweet at the time of writing, but unless that guy that runs Twitter decides to make everyone's DMs public, we won't know if they had any contact or not. It seems that Blazinski doesn't actually want to run the game itself. He just wants to try bringing the IP back. In response to a Twitter user asking behind the game designer's intentions, Blazinski wrote, I'm over being CEO and lead designer. Shiz is exhausting, but if a third party wants to resurrect it with Nexon, I'm down for consulting. Lawbreakers came out at a pretty bad time. For one, it was released just a year after Overwatch, another hero shooter that obviously proved uh, very popular, and PUBG Battlegrounds was, re was released just a few months after Lawbreakers, popularizing the battle royale genre. This one's important as Boss Key Productions Blazinski Studio tried to make its own battle royale, Radical Heights, in an obvious rush to tap into the, the genre. Paired with Lawbreaker's failure and Radical Heights not performing well either, Boss Key Productions was shut down. According to Blazinski himself, Lawbreaker's failed because it was too woke, but maybe it's just better to accept the world didn't need, and probably still doesn't need, another generic shooter.
So look, at my, in my personal opinion, guys, Lawbreakers, yes, it came out at a pretty bad time. It reminds me of like a Titanfall 2 when that was released. It came out like between Call of Duty and Battlefield. It just didn't make a lot of sense. And so a lot of people who love Call of Duty were playing that game. A lot of people who love Battlefield played that game. And this other shooter, that being Titanfall 2, which was awesome, by the way, did not get the exposure it deserved. So with Lawbreakers, it feels very, very similar. And Boss Key Productions, I just feel like it was mismanaged in terms of, you know, releasing Lawbreakers and Radical Heights, which were two games that I actually think were awesome, but they were chasing more of a trend than anything else. And I think that was ultimately its demise. Instead of trying to be its own thing, it was trying to chase these, these trends that we were seeing in the gaming industry. And that's what I think ultimately left it to its demise. Could Lawbreakers make a return? I absolutely think it could. And should it? I definitely think it should. I think it should be a game that's at least out there and exists out there. And I even think Radical Heights should be a game that should be existent as well and, and fully serviced and things of that nature. And so I would love to see this happen in the future. What do you guys think though? I feel that we as the community need to voice this and echo these things into existence. If you guys want to see, you know, Lawbreakers make a return and maybe even potentially have a sequel at some point or another. Let me know what you guys think about Lawbreakers in the comment section down below. Do you think this will ever return to the fray? Let me know. And for more Lawbreakers content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. With the Max Payne 1 and 2 remakes already confirmed by Remedy Games, obviously Remedy, absolutely incredible. I love this studio and I cannot wait, obviously, for a number of their games like, you know, Alan Wake 2. I can't wait to, to see that whole world because... You know, it reminds me a lot of Max Payne. It reminds me that dark, gritty style that they created with Max Payne 1 and 2. And I cannot wait for the remake to come out and release to the world. But that being said, let's talk about Max Payne 4. This is the continuation that I would love to see. And we're starting to get a little bit of some talk about this and rumblings about Max Payne 4 and the possibility of it in the future. So let's talk about it. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts about Max Payne 4 in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article coming to us from Arthur Novienko of Gfinity, third-person shooters have been one of the most popular game genres for decades. It's no surprise since there are many successful titles in this genre, one of the most popular series of third-person shooters is Max Payne from Rockstar Games. In the game, you have to play as Max Payne and kill all the goons that stand in your way. Of course, there will be a lot of them. Throughout three games, we watch the protagonist's revenge and its consequences after after losing his family. The last entry came out more than a decade ago, so many fans are curious about the Max Payne 4 release date. So Max Payne 3 was released in 2012. After more than a decade, we still haven't seen the continuation of the series. Many players are wondering if it is worth waiting for at all. It is rather difficult to answer this question since Rockstar has not spoken about the Max Payne series for a while. Therefore, we believe that the players are unlikely to ever see the new adventures of the Grizzled Detective. And I disagree with this because I believe that our voice matters, guys. If we want to see a continuation of Max Payne, we can echo this thing into existence, similar to what happened with the Dead Space franchise. Dead Space was in a limbo state or a state of no return, and we as the community really wanted a new one made, and the, lo and behold, we got a Dead Space remake, and Dead Space now is back in a major way. So I think the same thing can be said for something like Max Payne. Also, an important reason for this is the ending of Max Payne 3. Our protagonist survived, and in theory, new adventures can await him. But Max has gone through too much. It is difficult to count how many enemies he has killed and how many bullets he has taken. In all three parts, we watched how the personality of the hero changed. In the last cutscene, Max can finally relax on the beach, not thinking about how to dodge bullets and how to get revenge. So I just think, though, guys, that Max Payne, there's still so much more for him to do. Even though, yes... The way that Max Payne 3 ended, it kind of left him like, you know, he could just chill on the beach, kind of ride off into the sunset. But I feel that there's still so much here to this story to draw him right back into it. I believe that Max Payne could definitely come back into the fray. There is no doubt about it. It's not all doom and gloom, though. In 2022, Remedy announced full-scale remakes of the first two Max Payne games in agreement with Rockstar Games. While it may not count as a proper sequel, we'll get to see the first two games in glorious HD. And what's awesome about this, guys, is that 
if we ever got a Max Payne 4, if the Max Payne 1 and 2 remakes do really good, I believe we will see a Max Payne 4 absolutely similar to like Dead Space got a remake. And now we're the talk is that Dead Space 4 is going to be coming out amongst a multitude of other games. I believe if Max Payne 1 and 2, the remakes do an awesome job, I believe that we're going to be getting a Max Payne 4. It's just a matter of time. And Remedy Games is the best to do something like this. I believe even better than Rockstar to do a Max Payne 1 and 2 remake because they've already done it before. And I think that these remakes could be something really special. And who knows, maybe Remedy could be the ones helming a Max Payne 4. Let's make that happen, guys. So at the moment, there is no news about the development of Max Payne 4, but we cannot deny that perhaps in a couple of years, Rockstar Studios will release the fourth game. Therefore, below we have collected five things we would love to see in the new Max Payne. So a noir style. The first two Max Payne games were incredibly atmospheric thanks to their noir style. However, in the third part, the developers missed this, which made the game look worse. Therefore, if Max Payne 4 ever comes out, it must be in a noir style. 100% agree with that. The multiplayer, what could be better than epic bullet time shootouts? Of course, these are bullet time shootouts with a friend. In a new Max Payne game, we would like to see the multiplayer similar to the third part because the multiplayer there is incredibly fun. And I agree 100% with that as well. Fascinating detective story. Of course, the Max Payne series is loved for its exciting gameplay, but without a story, all those fights would get boring very quickly. Since Max has become almost a police legend, the developers have many opportunities to create an exciting story story in Max Payne 4. And so with this guys, I would love to see them go back to that comic book style that we got, like especially with Max Payne 1. I thought that's something that really made it very dark, gritty. And it just like the, having all of the voiceovers and, and just the, you know, the bullet time that we got in that original game. I can't wait to play it, of course, with Max Payne 1's, you know, uh, remake that we're going to be getting from Remedy, but I think they could go so much deeper in a Max Payne 4. Environment destructibility. So an indicator of a good shooter is how much recoil weapon has and what marks it leaves on some uh, on game objects. In all parts, Remedy has historically tried to make as many destructible objects as possible. We would like to see something on the level of control because it's been a decade since we last saw environmental destruction in a Max Payne game. And then more locations. The main gameplay in the Max Payne series is shootouts. It is why level design is so important. So we would like to see at least a few dozen huge locations where you can use different strategies to defeat the enemies in the new game. From high rises to open outside areas, we want even more variety. And I 100% agree with it, guys. I can't I can't disagree with any one of those. I just believe that if we as a community come together to, whether it's on social media, Reddit, things of that nature, going to the developers, going to Remedy, to try to get a Max Payne 4 made, we can echo this thing into existence. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts about it. We're going to be making a lot of Max Payne content in the future. Let me know, guys. Let's talk about it. And for more Max Payne 4 content and videos, keep it here with Zero TV. So in this next segment of the show, I want to talk about Mia Khalifa. Where is she at this point in time? What is she doing? And I would love to hear you guys' thoughts about this in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article coming to us from the folks over at Marka.com, when she stepped away from the adult industry, Mia Khalifa did so because she felt her privacy had been invaded and she has admitted that her privacy is probably permanently lost. When I go out in public, I believe post-traumatic stress disorder kicks in, she told the BBC's Hard Talk show. I get the impression that people can see right through my clothes because of the glances I get and it makes me feel terrible. It makes me feel as if I've forfeited my right to privacy, which I have because I'm only a Google search away. She is also also openly criticized the adult industry and the way young girls are manipulated. There are all of these stories of girls whose lives have been ruined by it and men who have taken advantage of them, she continued. There are contracts that they didn't even understand the jargon of. So obviously guys, that is something she is very, very polarizing in terms of, you know, a lot of people look at it and they, you know, have an opinion one way or another about, you know, her coming out talking about the adult industry. And so 
before we can really talk and dive more into that, we have to talk about how she even got into the adult industry in the first place. Well, she also revealed how she started out in the adult industry, explaining that she was spotted on the street as a young graduate. It was more so, oh, you're beautiful. Do you want to do some modeling? And you have a great body. I think you'd be awesome in modeling, she revealed in the BBC interview. I came in toward the studio, which was very respectful. It was nothing that made me uncomfortable. The first time I went in wasn't the first time I filmed an adult movie. It was the second time. The first time was more so, do you want to do this thing? And so nowadays, the ex-adult film actress is actively on OnlyFans and Instagram, but she no longer does full frontal nudity. She also explained that she has fun with fans who ask for content that goes beyond the rules. If she is asked for something triple X, she writes triple X on a piece of paper and sends it to the follower. So she's kind of taken some of these things and I think even even though it sounds like she's having, she had a lot of trauma from being in the adult film industry, it seems like she's kind of turning it into a little bit of some fun in terms of from her OnlyFans as well as Instagram. And she talks about it and the way that she, you know, brings it up, it definitely is very polarizing. And a lot of people are looking one way or another at the way that she has talked about her time in the adult film industry. And I think for everyone, guys, anyone who's going to be in a situation like that is going to have different opinions. Some people are going to love it. You know, they're going to love their work. Other people are not going to love it. It's like any job out there. Some people love their jobs. Some people despise their jobs. And, you know, obviously sometimes you have to find a new way, a new path. And it looks like that's what it needs to be and what it needed to be for Mia Khalifa. And so now obviously being on OnlyFans and Instagram, she is creating and has a massive following and she just creates, you know, more and more content for her followers. And she has been growing and growing as a creator and I don't think there's any signs of her slowing down anytime soon. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below about Mia Khalifa, her whereabouts. What do you guys think is going to happen in the future with her content and where you know do you think she's going to end up as time goes? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And for more content, gaming, esports, and entertainment, keep it here with Zero TV. One of my favorite studios out there is Remedy. Remedy, guys, unbelievable company that, of course, you know, are responsible for two of my favorite games of all time, that being Max Payne 1 and 2. And obviously, in more recent memory, working on games like Control and now, of course, Alan Wake 2. And I want to talk about Control 2, a sequel to this beloved game. I cannot wait to see a continuation of it. I want to talk about it, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, in an article that's coming to us officially from Remedy Entertainment and their website, Remedy Entertainment signs a co-development and co-publishing agreement with 505 Games for Control 2. Remedy Entertainment has signed an agreement with 505 Games, an international video game publisher and a subsidiary of Digital Bros Group, under which Remedy and 505 will co-develop and co-publish Control 2, a sequel to Remedy's award-winning game, Control. Control's initial development budget amounts to EUR 50 million and Remedy will retain the owner ownership of the game's intellectual property. The development, marketing, and post-launch investments, as well as the future net revenues generated by the game, will be equally split between 505 Games and Remedy. The game will be available on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X, S, and will be built on Remedy's proprietary Northlight engine and tools. Remedy will publish the game on the PC platform, and 505 Games will publish it on the console platforms. The project is currently in concept stage. The critically acclaimed Control was published in 2019 since its release, Control was nominated for 11 BAFTA Games Awards and received over 20 Game of the Year awards, including IGN's 2019 Game of the Year. We are excited to deepen our cooperation with Remedy and continue the success story of Control together. Since its launch in 2019, Control has sold over 3 million copies, say Rami and Rafi Galante, co-CEOs of Digital Bros Group and 505 Games. Control is the biggest investment 505 Games has ever Ever made, so it has a special place in our hearts. We are grateful to the whole player community 
that has made Control such a long-lasting and love game and are even more excited to bring out Control 2, Rami and Rafi Galanti continue. In June 2021, Remedy announced that the company had outlined high-level collaboration terms with 505 Games for a bigger budget control game. I'm now proud to confirm that the bigger budget control game, also known as Codename Heron, is Control 2, a full-blown sequel to our award-winning game Control, says Tiro Vertala, CEO of Remedy. The agreement does have an impact on Remedy's outlook for 2022. So guys, Control 2 is confirmed and it is going to be coming and I'm so excited about this. And I love that Remedy is working with 505 Games on this so that they can focus on Max Payne 1 and 2, those remakes, and hopefully a Max Payne 4. What I'd love to see Remedy do is continue obviously servicing Alan Wake 2, but also, you know, work on the Max Payne remakes and then work on a Max Payne Pain 4 working with Rockstar. It seems like Remedy wants to work with other companies as they're bringing out projects. And I love this because what it means is Remedy doesn't have to focus all their resource and development on a single game at a time. They can be working on a multitude of projects. And I love this. As Remedy has grown, and I believe that they are gonna grow in a major way after the release of Alan Wake 2, this is incredibly exciting for the future of Control, but also the future of even other projects that Remedy's working on like Max Payne, Alan Wake, so on and so forth. Cannot wait for this, guys. I'm going to be giving you more information as it comes out about Control 2. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more Control 2 content and videos, keep it here with Zero TV. And with that being said, everyone, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of The 8 Below Show. And if you guys did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, stay positive. And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.